I'm going to put some of this on screen, of individuals overrunning the border in Tijuana by the thousands pouring over the fence, having tear gas fired at them. And once they get here, once they are inside uh, the United States, then they go to the leftist judges who give them up to four years to even show up for their hearing on supposedly being a refugee. Now, again, this footage is all posted to Infowars.com right now, and we're going to be going over some of that f for you here. Uh, again, I was just watching it back there right before we went live. We have the footage. Uh, DrudgeReport.com also has a lot of the footage. Now, uh, CPB suspends all traffic at the port of entry after migrants, that's illegal alien invaders, rush to the border. The latest, U.S. agents shoot tear gas at the migrants. That's the Washington Post whitewashing. Trump closes U.S. border checkpoint at Tijuana as migrant caravan breaks through the fence. The migrant caravan that did not exist. Migrants enveloped in tear gas after heading towards the U.S. You mean violently throwing rocks at people and climbing over the fences. And once they get here, they have to be processed back into Mexico, and the judges don't allow it in almost every area of the country, particularly California, where the Ninth Circuit and those other federal courts actively work against America. And that's why the U.N. and others are funding this. Now... This is such incredible treason, and we knew it was coming. And to watch the U.N. get U.S. taxpayer money and set this up and fund this, just like they did in Europe, over and over and over again, it makes my head spin. And then to have the media, the collaborator-controlled corporate media, act like the United States is bad and Trump is bad and our nation existing is bad as they try to open up Central and South America to literally flood us by the tens of millions a year, just like Europe's being hit by the Islamists out of North Africa and the Middle East, who then come in and literally go on welfare and are politically controlled by the globalists. And just the footage is so dramatic. If you're a radio listener, you've got to go to Infowars.com. Jamie White has put up an article that's a big boil down uh, of all of this. We have also sent out a live feed that's on the front page of Infowars.com that is so incredibly critical that everyone get this live feed and share it with everyone you know. Red alert, UN-funded migrant horde of violent criminals just broke through the U.S. border. This is just unspeakable that this is going on. And... It built up and it built up and it built up. And first they said, oh, you've got to let them in. Oh, they're nothing but children. No, they're almost all military age men, as you can see, if you're watching on TV. And then they said, oh, it doesn't exist. Trump's crazy. Alex Jones is crazy. Matt Drudge is crazy. This is truly next level. At this point, I am almost speechless because it's, 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 it's Trump's done everything he can, but under law, once these people get in here, they're then handed over to these traitor judges who let them stay. National News is saying, oh, the Border Patrol is being mean and shooting at innocent migrants with tear gas. Even though they play the footage of people throwing rocks at the police, at the riot police, at the Border Patrol, at ICE. And their dramatic footage of the imaginary caravan that MSNBC and the Democratic Party... And CNN said, did not exist. They said, Trump made it up. There is no migrant caravan that slammed into Mexico three and a half weeks ago and that attacked police and even killed people. All that footage of those giant masses pouring through didn't happen. Let's roll for TV viewers. Some of the footage, and I'll describe it for radio listeners, of, of just 30 minutes ago. And it's ongoing. We've got live satellite feeds of this, of the people from the Mexico side, Tijuana, running down the sand embankment and up and scaling the fence, and they're in to the United States. And this is ongoing 
just like the footage you saw almost a month ago in northern Guatemala and Honduras as 50 plus thousand people in five different waves poured across. Oh, and let's slow that footage down if we can. What are they waving? Honduran flags, Venezuelan flags. Thousands of people pouring across and then scaling. I, I, I was watching CNN right before we went live, and they said, Trump's being mean to poor migrants. And they'd show some canned footage of a child. And then they would show people running up the embankments, climbing over and attacking police. But they would talk bad about the police, saying that they had attacked them. This is the total spin, the total deception. It looks like something out of World War II with people storming beaches. And the same thing was started in six years ago in Europe with the UN funding refugee centers in North Africa and the Middle East, opening up migration routes through Syria into Turkey and then into Eastern Europe, using Zodiac boats by the hundreds a day, bringing thousands of people in North Africa, paid for by U.S. aid, laundered through Soros's operations and shipped directly into Europe. And then they're used as political weapons. How incredible is it to see national news say, we've got to let the caravan in, they're all children, when they're 90 plus percent in Europe, it's 80 percent military aged men coming in, and criminals, people waving foreign flags, they've been caught smuggling kidnapped children, and, and there's caravans showing up all the time. But these are huge caravans of tens of thousands, not hundreds, and they are publicly letting the world know that the border is open and that the UN can stage these staging grounds and bring these people up. And now, what do they always do? They hopscotch. Once they start off in one Middle Eastern country, they then send in a bunch of refugees there. That country can't handle it. The refugees mass on the border of the next country. The UN comes in, is brought into the nation that's already been invaded by the UN, to handle the refugees, because that's their treaty, that's their supposed job, and then they exploit the people, train them, give them $1,000 debit cards for free. George Soros pays for it with U.S. taxpayers, money, that's Reuters, and then they invade the next country. And then they mass in that country and rob and steal and crap in the street and sleep in the road, and so the U.N. then organizes the next refugee camp. And then you've gone all the way from Venezuela to San Diego in just one year. They started out a year ago at refugee camps in Venezuela, many of them. Then that collapsed. Then they move in to the next country, the next country. And now they're all the way up and they have breached. If you just tuned in, illegal alien horde has climbed the fences and has breached the United States and has made it over to the other side. They are making it into the United States where they will then be loaded onto buses and they will be taken to immigration and naturalization. They will overwhelm the system. The left will use taxpayer money with paid for lawyers to represent them. They will go into the first liberal judge and that's why they're invading California. And they will be released and on average, the wait for a deportation hearing is two plus years, some are as much as almost four. So let's explain this right now. The UN and multinational corporations get US taxpayer money. They then implode nations like Venezuela and others. They then organize the worst of the worst, criminals, communists, socialists, bandits, human smugglers, you name it, and they begin setting up refugee centers as they move the hordes towards your nation. Then the vanguard hits, blows through your border defenses, breaks them down. That's broadcast worldwide. And then others show up at the refugee centers, set up thousands of miles south, and begin to get their credit cards and their free food, and they are recruited. They are given debit cards. You can pull up Reuters. We said this a couple months ago, and the news said we were making it up. And we just pulled up from a year ago, Reuters, with George Soros bragging, he gets U.S. taxpayer money, billions through the, through the State Department, they give it to Soros. He then pays per leg 1,000 
dollars with no name on the debit card, the cash card. $1,000 of U.S. taxpayer money mainly. Others chip in as well. The Germans pay for it, all of them. That goes into the U.N. It's given to these non-governmental organizations, these criminal military organizations. They then weaponize, brainwash the people, prepare them. And they're smart. They don't give them five, ten thousand dollars to make the four or five thousand mile trek through seven, eight, nine countries. They say every leg you make it, you get a bag of food, you get any clothes you need, you can stay here a week, a month in the refugee center, the brainwashing center, and then you're given a one thousand dollar debit card. And that's why when they slammed into Tijuana three plus weeks ago, the mayor and others said, We have jobs, we have a lot of factories here. They said, we don't want those. We're here to conquer the U.S. Trump is Hitler. America sucks, but we're getting all the free crap. They are trained to hate the country and invade it. This is unbelievable. And we had our crew there weeks ago showing it, and the national news said it did not exist. That's how much they hate you. That's how stupid they think you are. So again, U.S. border defenses have been breached. As of November 25th, 2018, as of about 1.30 Pacific time, 3.30 Central, 2.30 Mountain, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the tens of thousands now massing of all the different caravans converging on, all militarily prepared, all coordinated, all given UN money from US taxpayers, all showing up with US aid bags to target one point on the border and overwhelm it. And they're gonna have little kids at the front of the PR with the collaborator media taking photos, shooting video, saying it's all children here just wanting food, they're starving, and evil US forces have attacked them. The truth is they're throwing rocks, they're trying to stab people, they're physically attacking, they've now overrun. US border defenses have been breached. And the collaborator media told you either they're all a bunch of innocent children, there's no men, or it doesn't exist. Exactly what an enemy military would do. This is not an assault. You're not under attack. Don't run. We are your friends. Lay down your arms. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you with extremely grave news. The United States border has been completely overrun by paramilitary trained forces by the UN who were funded by U.S. taxpayers. And the fate that Europe has seen, 15 million illegal aliens brought in by the UN in the last six years, is about to be duplicated here. The UN report itself says if they're successful breaking down the border with Central and South America, with the United States, that they plan to bring in 600 million people by 2050. I know that doesn't sound possible, does it, until you realize that by 2050, we're going to add 4 billion more people. Six plus billion or third world currently. Six hundred million handpicked, brainwashed by leftist ideology, set up at UN camps, and they're collapsed third world countries, they're communist countries like Venezuela, and then funded and marched up to the border to overrun border defenses, to be handed to Democrat Party judges, they're invading California for a reason, who will then release them. The average time is over two years until they're even supposed to show up for their deportation court date when they claim asylum. These people have used fake names. These people never show back up. These people are criminals. These people are money launderers, drug dealers. They're child abductors. Even the Washington Post admitted under Obama, when he kept saying in the news, there's children coming across the border, even though only 17% were under the age of 18. We sent reporters down there and said they show up, no ID, they load people on buses that the Democrats fund, and they ship them off to sanctuary cities, to then be given fake IDs, to be given welfare, to be set up to vote, and now it's all admitted. And now the imaginary caravan, remember when the public woke up and said, this, this looks terrible, then breaking down the defenses of southern Mexico three and a half weeks ago? People, even the average Democrat said, this is crazy. The, the barber shop I go to, it's mainly Hispanic barbers. 
in South Austin, they've been telling me about it. They're freaked out. Why are they waving foreign flags? Why are they burning American flags, Alex? Well, why, why, why is Trump being called bad for do, saying do something? This is crazy. So, my, my, you know, my Hispanic barber thinks it's dangerous and bad. So what did they do? Well, they just said, oh, it doesn't exist, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't exist. I mean, how insulting is that? But see, they always change the subject to have an argument where you just debate whether it exists or not, whether the sky's blue or bluebirds are blue or the Houston NFL football team is the Texans. We all know that. If someone tells it's, it's not true, they're a liar or they're mentally ill. Now, we're on over 200-plus radio stations, hundreds of TV stations. We're on satellite all over the country. People are watching this right now. This just happened an hour ago. We have live sat feeds of tear gas going off in there. We have live sat feeds of the riot police being overrun and being hit in the head with rocks. I've got a stack of news right here. But CNN's talking about how they're poor babies. CPB suspends all traffic at the port of entry between Tijuana and San Diego after migrants rush to the border. The latest, U.S. agents shoot tear gas at migrants who were hitting them with rocks and had just climbed over the fence illegally. But, oh, the Washington Post doesn't tell you that. Trump closes U.S. border checkpoint at Tijuana as migrant caravan breaks through the fence. Oh, at least the British news got it right. Breaks through, overrunning the U.S. And you're like, well, we'll just throw them back over the fence. <sighs> no, you won't. You know why? Because the Democrats controlled and got the laws passed. The president just has control over the border under law, but not what happens once they get to those traitor judges. And they know they get over, they're in. And now they're going to mass up against that fence, and the media is going to show kids and go, oh, the kids are out in the heat, no food. It's Trump's fault. It's America's fault. No, it's the criminal parents who brought a small number of children, a lot of them smuggled, a lot of them not even with their parents, as human shields. When some radical Islamicist trains their five-year-old to blow themselves up with TNT, they're the scumbag. And when somebody brings their kid across the desert and then shows up in the Arizona desert in the middle of the night and no one even knows if this is their mother, the media lies and says Trump took her away from her mother. They didn't. It's all lies. And now our border has been breached. Migrants enveloped in tear gas after heading towards U.S. NBC News. Oh, heading towards. Ben, imagine if you knocked down your neighbor's door, hit him in the head with a rock, and took their house over. NBC News would say, well, somebody was headed towards their neighbor's door and got assaulted. No, they assaulted us. Look at these headlines. Shock video, caravan migrants storm U.S. border in Tijuana. That's the Jamie White article on Infowars.com. But however you're listening to local radio or watching local television right now, tell everybody about the local radio station you're listening to and the local TV station you're watching, or go to Infowars.com and send out the link to the most censored, most demonized, most lied about show in the world because we tell the truth and we're faithful, good Americans. I had eight Democrats try to gang up on me in a taco place yesterday when I was picking up food for the crew. And they were calling me a traitor and a Russian and all this other crap. And, and these people are enemies of the nation. They have been brainwashed to believe the nation existing is bad. And they side with Soros and the UN that's funding all this. So here's the red alert page that has the live video feed of this show that needs to be sent out. Like you're Paul Revere, folks. You're just as important as I am. And I desperately need you to go to Infowars.com and Newswars.com and get the live feed page. Newswars.com doesn't get censored as much. Uh, when you try to tweet it out or Facebook it out. So go get that version. Red alert, UN-funded migrant horde of violent criminals just tore through U.S. border defenses. Tear gas fired. I wrote that headline right before we went live. Should I say just tore or just smash through? Yeah, I'd say smash through. Let's change that to smashed through U.S. border defenses. Tear gas fired. Watch live feed of the invasion here. America is in a state of emergency but what happens in every major war where napoleon invades 
or Hitler invades or any other invading army builds up on your border and masses, and you know they're about to invade, when Hitler invaded Poland, Czechoslovakia, Danzig, uh, Dark Horse, came in to block them at their moment of pure victory, ending our borders, flooding us like Europe, imploding our economy and bringing us down. And he believed that if he turned the prosperity back on, the globalists were blocking, that America would unite and to a great extent, America has united. All the evidence is overwhelming that the Democrats threw everything they had at this last midterm and stole massive races everywhere and that the referendum actually showed that America supports what's happening. They supported the $5 trillion in the stock market. They supported 2,000 major companies coming back, more than 10,000 smaller ones coming back. They supported the highest wage increases ever recorded. They supported uh, gas prices going down. They supported Trump pulling us out of the unelected, unaccountable TPP that would bring us into a global union. They supported all of everything else he did. They were informed. And then the president said, there's this plan to totally open the borders, and Obama just lets people in totally unvetted? He'd been doing that for five years before he left office? We first broke? They said there's nothing but children coming across and Obama lets children come in. We went down there. Less than 10% that we saw were children, but the feds said that 17% were under the age of 18. And it was just a bunch of military age men and women walking across and the border patrol was ordered to just no ID, don't check for diseases, don't check their backpacks. Heads of the Border Patrol Union went public and said, this is criminal. Some of them came on this show despite major reprimands. Some of them got fired for going on Sean Hannity, put their careers on the line because they, they were good people. By the way, most of them are Hispanic. They claim, oh, it's all this racism. No, you've got collapsing Latin America. You've got the UN building up base camps that they fund, that they politically choose the worst, the worst, and then they give them debit cards with free money, $1,000 per leg. I remember a, a month and a half ago, the, the, the big caravan was marching up out of South America into Central America towards Mexico. And Ted Cruz and, 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 and Congressman Matt Gates would tweet out video of them handing out cash to them, pesos to them uh, in Honduras and Guatemala and giving them U.S. aid bags. And then the media would say, apologize, Ted Cruz, apologize, Matt Gates. Why, the UN and George Soros aren't involved. No one's paying them. You could type in Open Society Foundation or the other groups, and it was George Soros at press conferences two years ago and a year ago in Reuters. I sh and AP saying George Soros is partnering with the UN and MasterCard to give $1,000 per leg to people from... Africa and the Middle East to come to Latin America and then come in illegally. Or they're paying to get visas on travel and then coming here illegally. There it is, George Soros MasterCard to partner to aid migrant and refugees. That's January 2017. Uh, again, imagine what it's like to know how all of this works. They already did it in Europe, brought in 15 million military-aged men in the last six years who are literally burning Europe down as we speak. Yeah, show them the footage out of North Africa and the Middle East of, 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 of what just happened to Europe, and then sh show the slums. If you're a radio listener, we're showing everything I say. When I say Soros is funding it, I show you Reuters, but it gets worse. They now are in the Washington Post and everywhere else saying Trump is a racist, Soros isn't involved, and it's worse. We showed you the WikiLeaks documents that they admit are real, where Soros, four years ago, they came out two years ago, or 26 months ago, technically, said, we're going to take over the Internet, have it given to the UN, we're going to censor all nationalists, all conservatives, and then Christians, we're going to open everything up to Islam, we're going to flood everybody, we're going to teach uh, uh, transgenderism to five-year-olds. This is all his plan. And he said, anyone trying to block us will be totally banned with a global social score. Now it's here. And then Mark Zuckerberg, who's Jewish, and his head of the company, who's Jewish, 
eight months ago, Soros begins giving speeches saying Facebook's going down, Facebook's evil. Well, that's because Facebook refused, unlike Google and unlike Twitter, to hire Soros trained. This is this is mainstream news. I'll show you in a moment. People to moderate and run the sites. He censored, he blocked, he did it all. They hired a PR firm to point out that Soros was funding it, which is true. Even the New York Times admits Soros funded it to take it over to, be, to, to, to fund Facebook employees to come out and claim they were doing bad things. Soros has funded people to do that here. And fake lawsuits. I mean, I've been through this. And now the New York Times comes out this week and says Mark Zuckerberg is an anti-Semite because George Soros is Jewish. So what they're saying is, if someone happens to be Jewish, which he renounced his Judaism and said he's an atheist and helped round up Jews for the death camps, he's told 60 Minutes. If someone doesn't let you take over their company, which Soros tried to buy control of, Soros began shorting the stock. And what did the PR company, they hired, very reputable company, it's all in the news, say? They put out in articles that the, that the New York Times calls fake news, that George Soros had nothing to do with any of this. But but what did the PR firm say? They said, George Soros is obviously preparing to short Facebook. We didn't let him take control. And so now he's going to short us and try to get regulators to take us over. This is all a plan by George Soros to take over the Internet. Now, everything they said was completely true. Just like we said, a migrant caravan funded by the U.N. just slammed over the border three weeks ago. Now it just slammed over our border today. And what did they say? They said, that's anti-Semitic. Think about that. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. What did George Soros just do? He just shorted Facebook before it went down in the last two weeks. And d depending on which subsidiary you look at, Fox News said he made 17 million bull. That's one of his companies. The guy has thousands. Reportedly, he's made hundreds of millions of dollars off shorting them. Now, that's the big crime right there. But see, what did the PR firm say eight months ago? They said Soros is clearly preparing to short Facebook because we wouldn't let him take it over. He's got a group funding all this. And it's wrong what he's doing. It's got overrun by the illegal alien horde funded by U.S. taxpayers through the State Department and then through George Soros. But it gets worse than that. <sighs> I was told by pretty high-level executives at Facebook two-plus years ago information that I've not repeated on air. And I thought they were trying to manipulate me. And then I was told by other people, some folks that, let's just say, are quite successful, uh, that Facebook was not all bad and that uh, Soros was trying to take it over about three years ago. And then it all came out in the WikiLeaks right before the election that it was basically true. And that Facebook had resisted where Google and Twitter and others had completely rolled over. So now when you saw it in the news this week that, did you hear Zuckerberg funded a fake news group to say anti-Semitic things about George Soros. What did he say anti-Semitic? Oh, they don't quote it because that's the fake news on CNN, the New York Times, everywhere. What they did was start seeing Soros give speeches saying how Facebook was going to go under and how evil it was in the last eight months. So they did research and found out he was funding groups to literally have infiltrators pay off people inside Facebook to then basically make up lies about Facebook so that George Soros, wait for it, could have a hostile takeover of Facebook, which is incredibly powerful and incredibly valuable. It was set up to be a pump and dump, but that's not what the establishment wants to do. They want to use it as their electioneering machine worldwide, and Soros is in the WikiLeaks. August 29, 2016, leaked Soros document calls for regulating Internet to favor open society supporters, block nationalist and conservative news, 
You now see that happening? Promote open society affiliated groups. Well, Facebook didn't take, like Google, Twitter, and others, the thousands of people that Soros was, quote, willing to give you for free. Just let them into your company. This guy overthrows countries. This guy's a famous currency speculator. This guy was known as an organized criminal till the 90s, and then he spent billions buying off our media. So how much more sensational can this get that it's in the WikiLeaks that they were going to take over the Internet and shut down nationalists and conservatives, and then, isn't it logical, all other media organizations that don't go under his control. Now, who does he represent? The deep state, a consortium of leftists, the Rothschilds, the Rockefeller Foundation. He is the figurehead. But regardless... His foundations fund every single group for open borders, for the illegal caravans, for Internet censorship. He gets your taxpayer money, takes a piece of it through the State Department, and then pays for the debit cards for the illegal aliens to come here. He pays for the plane tickets. He pays for the bus tickets with your money. And why not? Because we all act like a bunch of chumps, like a bunch of smucks, and let this monster feed on us. He's been dumping billions in a year to overthrow the U.S. and Europe, but now he just dumped $33 billion in. You go, where's he get all this money? All his money's tax-exempt. He's a globalist. That's just a small portion. But you wonder what's happening? That's $33 billion in Europe and America on the street to shut down InfoWars, to shut down Trump, to kill this country. Now, there it is. Leaked documents Soros calls for regulating Internet to... Favor open society supporters. What's the source? WikiLeaks. His own documents. Here's another one. Breitbart. Google partners with Soros-funded fact-checking service to fight fake news. Soros spends over $48 million funding media organizations. ABC News, The London Guardian, CNN. That's just in one year. That's MRC reporting that. Soros, now this is this week, dumps Facebook, Netflix stocks just before they dipped. Insider trading, 17.7 million just on one of his companies. It's in the hundreds of millions. Oh, what did Facebook say eight months ago when they started noticing Soros was badmouthing him? They said, we believe through their PR firm, he's getting ready to do a pump on us and a dump. He is getting ready to short our stock. And he's putting us down because we wouldn't let him take us over. He's a gangster, man. He showed up and you said, hey, you let me take over and censor everybody and let my people on the door, which would have done what they already did, dug up, made up dirt, twisted stuff around to take them down anyways. Because he wants to drive it down to nothing. And then that's why he's going to then, he's already got a, a, a piece of it. He's going to get it for nothing. But first, he's going to drive it down. Where's the congressional hearings on that? Oh, no, instead, they know this is all coming out. So Soros and the Democrats all call for hearings on Facebook and Zuckerberg spying on people. When compared to the NSA or Google, he's done nothing. And I'm not defending Mark Zuckerberg. The point is, is that I was let in on all this stuff like three years ago, and I thought it was a con. I, I told people I got contacted by high-level Facebook five years ago and then again two and a half years ago, and I thought it was a joke. God almighty, how things might have been different about it, just knowing what's going on. See, I just think of the globalists as so monolithic, and they are, but not totally. And Zuckerberg's like, you know what, dude? You're not going to muscle in on me. And he's finding out right now. Because that guy works for Juncker and the EU and the really old money. So, ladies and gentlemen, you think about this. This is so Unbelievable that Soros tries to muscle in and take over the company. All the other tech people get scared, let him in, let him take over, literally running them, running the censorship. And then the Jewish founder and the Jewish CEO, both of them are called anti-Semites because they pointed out that George Soros is trying to drive down our stock and short it and take us over in a hostile corporate takeover, which is happening. And the news even admits well, he does fund the group, and he did say Facebook is horrible and going down. 
and for criticizing it and saying he wants to take it over, he's against Jews. Did Mark Zuckerberg ever help round up Jews and give them to Hitler? No. Did the other lady there do that? No. Am I sitting there kissing their butt? No. But I tell you, you learn more and more every day, and this is incredible. Secret Facebook email show Mark Zuckerberg over data sharing scandal are seized by the parliament in England as they prefer to go criminally after him. Parliament seizes cash of Facebook internal papers. And it goes on from there. On Thanksgiving Eve, Facebook acknowledges details of Times investigation. The New York Times, owned by, you know, Mexican kingpins, connected to narcotics trafficking and all the rest of it, they come in and, oh, Sheryl Sandberg, she's anti-Semitic because she dared talk about Soros, who said, I'm going to bring your company down. And they're like, he's a famous speculator that shorts people, and he clearly is trying to take us over. We refuse to let him run Facebook, so that's why he's doing this. Oh, my God, you're anti-Semitic. Think about that. Think about how hardcore, and let me tell you, it's Soros funding the lawsuits against me. It's Soros trying to get our banks taken away. This guy is a monster, man. And, you know, most Republicans are scared of him. Most people, I know people that are guests on this show that I call up to come on. They go, oh, no, I'm not coming on your show. And they call back and they go, actually, I want to come on. And then they start singing the praises of Soros on air. And, and, and other people that have big podcasts, you know, read the, read the script. It's George Soros wasn't a Nazi. He didn't help Nazis. He, he was a survivor. He fought the Nazis. Total lie. And I just watch people I've known for 15, 20 years literally just shell out like that. That's how your country collapses, ladies and gentlemen. Because this devil, this Satan goes about like a lion roaring, seeing who he can devour. And we all just bow down and roll over as he funds the collapse of our border, as he funds transgenderism in the military to sabotage our readiness, as he funds every damn thing you could ever imagine that's evil. And Trump dare stand up against him, so Trump's a bad guy. Unbelievable. George Soros is involved in a hostile takeover of Facebook right now. And the entire corporate sellout media is all frothing, joining in. <sighs> Remember just a year ago, the mainstream would beg Facebook to promote them. It's so sick. It's like when Drudge promotes the New York Times and links their articles and they bitch and, oh, bring down Drudge. These people are sick, you know, over the years. But I wasn't sure if it was all accurate from high-level sources. I was told three years ago that George Soros was trying a hostile corporate takeover or a corporate raid of Facebook. And then WikiLeaks came out about eight months after that, confirming that. And if you just joined us, I just showed news articles where that was admitted. All the other tech giants like Google, you name it, let him take over in the last two years. But Facebook didn't. And so he, he got a bunch of people to infiltrate Facebook. He paid off employees. He got a bunch of their documents to then basically spin it and to have their own executives come out against Facebook. Not so that abuses can be stopped, but so that he and the globalists and the Democrats can fully take it over. And now it's all admitted. So when you see all this news about Facebook and hearings coming up about it and all this, that's what this is, is George Soros, who already just started bad-mouthing it eight months ago. They hired a PR firm to say, hey, he, he bankrupts companies, he bankrupts currencies, he's putting this out against us, he's going to do a shorting operation. It's what he does. He's the, he's the supervillain of this. And in response, the New York Times said that Sheryl Sandberg, Jewish, Mark Zuckerberg, Jewish, huge supporters uh, of uh, people's basic freedoms, when it comes to religion, at least on the surface. And they have the nerve to say that they're anti-Semitic. When George Soros wants to overthrow the state of Israel publicly, also in the WikiLeaks, Benjamin Netanyahu says George Soros is not a Jew. Benjamin Netanyahu has to come out and say that George Soros is not a friend of Israel. And people attacking him 
are doing a good thing. Now, whether you love Benjamin Netanyahu or hate him, I have to respect him. He stands up for his country, just like Trump stands up for his country or Putin does. I'm sick of these people that sell their country out. Benjamin Netanyahu is not doing that. This guy hates America, hates Israel. And then you've got all these anti-Semites that attack me because I attack Soros and say that I am on the Jewish payroll. The Jew, there's not a Jewish payroll. You've got this evil Nazi collaborator that helped round up his fellow Jews who is an atheist and has rejected his Jewish roots publicly in 60 Minutes interviews and says he's not ashamed for helping round up Jews. And you've got him in a hostile corporate takeover of Facebook and you've got the whole mainstream media piling on. You talk about getting ridiculous now. Zuckerberg's an anti-Semite because he funded a PR firm to put out press releases that Soros was getting ready to short the stock of Facebook and try to take it over, which he's now doing! More than 10,000 UN-trained, U.S. taxpayer-funded, George Soros Open Societies commanded Military-aged men began throwing rocks at the Border Patrol, stormed over, went over the walls, rampaging across. Many of them got through. They got arrested on the U.S. side. But when they get arrested, then they go before a liberal judge in California, federal judge. The Ninth Circuit controls the courts. They've said that an American flag is hateful, cannot be displayed. They say that the, the nation existing is evil and racist. That's the mainstream news. America was never great. It'll never be that great. Governor Cuomo, New York. And the U.S. has shut down major San Diego port of entry as migrants rush the border. That's CNN. They have r rampaged across it, waving Honduran flags and Venezuelan flags, screaming down with America. And Trump is the Antichrist. And we are not criminals. We are international workers of the world. The average person hears that. Oh, we're international workers of the world. The end of the slogan written by V.I. Lenin in the 1890s was unite. International workers of the world unite. That is the Bolshevik revolution slogan. 1917. So CNN has the quotes here, and, and I've got Washington Post. Oh, they said we're international workers. There it is. I was saying Lenin. I know he quoted it when he started getting popular, but I guess it's 1848. They check everything I say. The political slogan, Workers of the World Unite, is one of the most famous rallying cries from the Communist Manifesto, 1848, by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Literally, proletariats of all countries unite. But soon, popularized in English as workers of the world unite, you have nothing to lose but your chains. A variation of the phrase workers of all lands unite, and then Russia, America, is also inscribed in Marx's tombstone. The essence of the slogan is that members of the working classes throughout the world should cooperate to achieve victory in class conflict. Let's boil that down. You're dumb. You're a criminal. You've been thrown out of Venezuela. You've been thrown out of other countries. Uh, the UN will give you $1,000 per leg because you're a, a criminal. To come up and attack the U.S., the Democrats will put you on welfare, and you're going to be happy as pie. And then if I dare talk about it or our crew talk about it, the news goes, Alex Jones is insane. Donald Trump is now Alex Jones. That was all over MSNBC, CNN two weeks ago. Trump is insane. But we, we, I even saw like CNN, the newscast we played here on air. There was a couple of them like, tonight, grave information. The president is now saying that an imaginary caravan is coming towards the U.S. as part of a U.N.-funded plan to bring down our sovereignty. This first originated with Alex Jones. Alex Jones, the same man that says that there's Martian slave colonies. Never said it, see? But... When you hit this level of evil, what do you do at that point? Workers of the world unite. And the V.I. Lenin, larger international workers of the world. Well, I'm telling you, I know my stuff, guys. Look up Lenin 
International Workers Party. And if memory serves, he's the founder of that in 1895. The point is, is I'm going from memory, but I was rereading some documents just a few weeks ago and came back across that. So these people are literally spouting V.I. linen as they charge over the U.S. border. Do you know how frustrating that is? You see that in the distance? That was a Venezuelan flag. And if you look closely, one of those is a Syrian flag. And there's a Mexican flag there. You got a Mexican flag. You got a Venezuelan flag. You got a Honduran flag. You got a lot of flags, but let's just say this. These folks are hopped up and hyped up, and they're ready. Where are the children in these shots? I see one woman right there. She's pregnant. She's going to get that anchor baby in quick. And you know, Soros lives in Connecticut and lives in Switzerland and lives in Luxembourg. You know, he's not going to be here while we go under the Communist International. And remember, it's a thing because the Austrian-Hungarian Empire and the Russians and everybody else had just freed the serfs. Yeah, white people were indentured slaves. About 80% of white people were, were slaves on average. And England and others were the first to get rid of it. England got rid of it like 600 years ago. But see, Germany didn't get rid of it till the 1860s. And Russia didn't get rid of it till... When did Russia get rid of the serfs? Public was the 1880s. I'm going from memory. Let's look up when... The, the Russian czars abolished the serfs, served them. But, but point is, the globalists said, how do we con all these people from the farm back in? They're used to being on communes. We'll tell them they're going to come and work in a slave factory. And they'll, they'll get part of the pay. They'll never know. There it is. I said, emancipation of the serfs, 1861. I remember it was the 1870s and 80s, but I, don't, I think it was another act too. But point is, it's the same thing in Germany, which was Austrian Hungarian Empire at the time. Again, if you're a TV viewer, you're seeing me go from memory here, and the crew pulls it up. You can see it for yourself. So this is what's really going on. And you've got them, the big banks, the big globalists, sucking Latin America dry, putting communists in, brainwashing the public, collapsing that country, and then using those dumbed-down, politicized populations that are weaponized to attack the next country in a domino effect. <laughs> You know that Google and Facebook and Twitter and all these big operations have it set up where they pay almost no tax. Apple's the worst. They have the worst slave factories. Uh, they use Chinese government to suppress anybody that tries to unionize and, and, and have them killed. But then Tim Cook goes around going, uh, uh, uh. seriously, he goes around going, I'm gay, I'm gay, uh, uh, uh. So it's okay then because he's liberal. So, well, he's gay, so they own slave factories and kill people that try to, you know, unionize. It's okay because he's gay. Uh, you know, as long as he's gay, it's cool. And so that's what's going on here. So think about that. Think about that long and hard that Apple doesn't pay any taxes corporately. They're now officially in China. They're state-run. They're tax-exempt. You give Tim Cook a problem, I buy birdie. It's curating, though. It's pulling weeds, you know, breaking eggs. He's the super class. You're, you're a slave. But it's the sickening liberal candy coating about how good it is. And, and then, although America's bad, the average American paying like 60% in taxes one way or another, you're bad. Oh, yeah, fines, fees, income taxes, state taxes, uh, sales taxes, property taxes. Yeah, the average person, well, depending on demographic, but let's just say it's close to 60%. This guy has the rules written where he pays almost no taxes. His corporation pays no taxes. Just like Jeff Bezos is, is subsidized by taxpayers. In fact, he gets money from taxpayers. It's, 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 it's even worse. But he's going to lecture you through the media how America sucks and how we got to open our borders and bring in third world populations who they then brainwash and weaponize. How much of this crap do we have to put up with by these monsters?
with Coleman Hart in the United States. Because people like straight shooting. And, and Mexicans, too, to the show, they know that we know what we're talking about. We've done our research. A lot of Mexicans actually want to have a prosperous uh, nation. So if you're a Mexican in Tijuana, or you're a Mexican in an area that's seen the migrants come through, or you're a citizen of another country you know, visiting or living down there, or you're military currently deployed down there, or you're a Border Patrol part of ICE, if you just joined us, listeners, it's indescribable. Red alert. UN-funded migrant horde of violent criminals that just smashed through the U.S. border defenses, tear gas fired. And we've got live set feeds of this. They hit about three hours ago, attacked for about an hour and a half through rocks of police, <sighs> climbed over the border fences, hundreds of them, and we don't know what happened. The others then withdrew. And this is the same thing happened in Macedonia. Same thing happened in Italy. Same thing happened in uh, Serbia. Same thing has happened all over the world in Guatemala, in Honduras, in Mexico just a month ago. First 1,000 show up, then 5,000, then 20,000. And when they hit about 20,000, they smash down your fences and overrun the police holding babies up. There, there, there might even be, uh, when I say 10% women and children, uh, we're all watching these, this footage. I mean, it, it's, there, there's hardly any women or children. The Pentagon estimates 90% military-age men. They smash over, and then the compliant corporate media only shows a few close shots of women and children. And then they have a Photoshop thing of Trump standing over a little girl saying he hurt her or whatever. And then even the Washington Post admits large numbers of smuggled children who aren't with their parents disappear into sex dens as young as age five. That's the Washington Post. And Michael Moore got one thing right about a month ago. He goes, you know, there's lots of caravans. They're, they're always here. Big deal. Then he, a few days later, that didn't work, so he started lying again and said, there is no caravan. Remember that? There is no caravan. Well, I guess currently, or I guess, yeah, there is no caravan. There's a whole bunch of them at any one time. U.S. taxpayer funded through the State Department to Soros. It's all on record. So what do we do? Why do they want to get Lou Dobbs fired a few weeks ago? Because he had Judicial Watch on with the documents saying George Soros is quarterbacking with his Open Foundation, Open Society Foundation, quarterbacking, giving him $1,000 debit cards and massing them in Central and South America, $1,000 per leg. Because you don't just want to give them all the money up front, they might run off. You give them each leg of the trip $1,000 per country you traverse. You can do that in style, baby. $1,000, all the food you can eat. They build refugee centers at the border of each new country. So you get into one country, get $1,000. Get to the edge of the new one, there's another refugee center. Rest a week or whatever, get food, get, get more money. Boom, next level. And you get to El Norte, free everything. This is 21st century warfare. Once they're there, they're enrolled uh, in the names of dead people to vote. They're put on welfare. The Democrats take a skim of that. About half the welfare money, it's total mafia. Project Veritas caught that undercover video. They're put in meatpacking plants. They're put in factories. They work illegally. And then a skim of that is taken. If they want to get their kids in, now they got to pay the Democrat lawyers to sue all handles it. Here in Austin, it's huge. You, 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 you drive by, you go by some of these Democrat top law firms, and there'll be a line of Guatemalans, Venezuelans out the door in there. And they're in there getting all signed up to be represented by that law firm. And then that law firm puts them in touch with the Mexican mafia and others who they pay their cut to. And then that money is given to them in political contributions and other deals. And it's big money. Now, I actually know the specifics and names, quite frankly. I was approached by prosecutors and others years ago right here in Travis County, and I was uh, shown all this. I already knew all this. And they didn't even expect me to take action because they, they knew, I, what am I supposed to do? You want me to, you know, they just wanted me to know. And the governor knows this, others know this. This is the type of total lawlessness. Can you imagine the sex exploitation, the skimming off the top? This is a permanent underclass they control that they feed off of. And every time the Republicans try to have a legitimate 
way to bring law-abiding good people in and make it easier to get here and easier to get naturalized. The Democrats don't want it. They want either total amnesty or nothing. No, we can't do total amnesty for anybody. That's totally lawless. And so they get to keep the illegal operation going while claiming they want to reform it. That's the plan in total. So in the next two segments, let me give the number out. A network of cities funding immigration lawyers expanding because they skim off the money. 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. We'll probably have time for six, seven calls, and I'll just go to you and get you off because I know you're busy, but I want to hear from law enforcement that's on the border, Border Patrol, ICE. Uh, I want people in Mexico that have witnessed all this, people in San Diego are witnessing it. 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. And we will get your calls. But in case you just tuned in, the U.S. just got hit by the imaginary migrant illegal alien caravan funded by the U.N. with taxpayer money that just climbed over the border and slammed into police and military. And Trump isn't going to put this out. He's smart not to, but I can do it at a limited level so you know. From the little reports we got, it looks like hundreds got in. They'll then be sent to immigration judges that let them out for, on average, two-plus years. They just say, we'll see you in a couple of years. They never show. Like, what was the number I've seen? Like 90-plus percent never show back up to the hearings. Well, they've already been given a new identity. They're already working with the Democrats. They're already getting a large part of their, their livelihood skimmed off the top. Now, we're going to go to break and come back and uh, take some of your calls. Again, that's only calls from people with direct knowledge of this, Border Patrol, ICE, military on the border, people in Mexico that have witnessed the caravan. Please, other callers, let them get a chance to get through. 877-789-2539. All right. I've done an hour and a half of broadcast, haven't plugged yet, and we won't be here if I don't plug. Um, and so the plan to kill America starts with the collapse of Latin America. That's future war, ladies and gentlemen, and we're witnessing it. And in a war, when you're being invaded, there are a lot of doctrinal systems, especially when a war starts, you tell them no one hit your border, no one is attacking. The, again, the Germans at the beginning of World War II, when they would invade Czechoslovakia and Poland, for up to a week, they would say, we have not invaded. We have not invaded. We have not invaded. Now, Hitler would be on the radio and on newsreels to Germans saying, we have stood up and we are fighting back after the Poles attacked our base at Glywitz. The truth is he'd had German troops attack their own base and, and then shoot film of it in Operation Hemmler, which is declassified to blame the Poles. But so he was telling Germans, we have smashed into them because they attacked us. Poland has attacked us. But they were broadcasting into Poland, you are not under assault. No one is attacking you. Same thing, there is no caravan. There is no world government. Islam is peaceful. Lay down your firearms. No one wants your guns, but we're going to ban them. This is a tactic. You go, that doesn't make sense. It would discredit those that are telling the lie, that they say there's no caravan, but it smashes through Mexico, smashes through here, it's child smuggling on record. That's because you're informed. They're targeting people that don't pay attention. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I was reading some of the writings of Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister to understand evil. And he was telling German propagandists, he said, stop giving them big complex reasons. People just wanna be lazy. Give them an excuse not to believe. It doesn't matter if it can be disproven. Appeal to authority, just have it everywhere. So when bombs were dropping all over Germany and they were starting to lose the war, they would go on air and if say 10,000 homes got burned up in a night, they'd say two bombs fell and burned five houses. And you go, that doesn't make sense. If you're in a town and a third of the city just burned down overnight, because a thousand uh, Lancaster British bombers and US B 17s just dropped, you know, 100,000, 200,000 firebombs on your ass. Why would, why would the Nazis go on uh, radio and they had newsreels every day? It was free. You'd go into theaters everywhere. It was like TV and they'd have a newsreel. You just step in and watch it. They didn't have TV yet, but they had that. Limited homes had TV, but no. no. I'm digressing off in history. You know, that doesn't make sense. Like you're getting, whole cities are getting burned down. Why would you say it didn't happen? 
because then it would make the debate about people arguing that the city was burned down instead of the city was burned down. You see, they would make the debate about, okay, Acosta chops her hand, grabs the mic, pulls it back. We just zoom in on the video. Everybody sees the video. Everybody sees it's not edited. But say we edited it, say we sped it up, which we didn't, even though the video is the same length, and make the debate about did we edit it? See, now you're not talking about Acosta asking three, four questions, not shutting up after the third, pushing her hand down, grabbing the mic back, saying he didn't touch her. What do you do when he's done that? You simply say Alex Jones and Donald Trump are liars. Acosta didn't touch her. That's a fake video. And then everybody has a national debate for five days about whether it happened or not. And you're like, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. If you're trying to deceive people, think about how smart that is. Think about how smart that is. Instead of having a debate about Acosta not shutting up, always heckling, always asking three, four more questions, you just change it and say it didn't happen, and the debate happens about whether it happened or not. By the way, I, you know, I love our audience, but we've got 20-something phone lines, and we got one person that's answering the phones, and I said, military or ICE, to give us your take on the border, and the phone's all loaded up, and it's all regular listeners want to give their opinion. So we're not going to have any calls, and that's okay. But I wanted to hear from ICE. I wanted to hear from the military. I wanted to hear specifically on people what you think of the invasion and the fact that they said this caravan wasn't coming, and now it just slammed over the U.S. border. And I don't know why they're not talking about the fact that a couple hundred got over because they don't want to encourage people to know they're, you know, they're going to now get asylum, basically, because of the liberal judges. But... They've already run over the, the Mexican police. They've run over uh, everybody else, and, and more are coming, and, and, and this is a national crisis. So, so let me just in general give the number out only for police or military to give your take on this and how serious this is and how existential it is to the nation's future. Or am I wrong? Maybe the footage we're showing is fake if you're a TV viewer. Maybe it's not over local news that this all just happened, people waving foreign flags. No, it did happen. And I can't believe that we still have CNN saying nothing happened. How insulting is this? <sighs> so uh, the number again is 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. We'll take a few calls on the other side if they're able to get through. But 877-789-ALEX, I specifically want to get military view on this. Or even if you're not on the border, that's a very limited group working right now, ICE or former ICE, just your take on, you saw Europe overrun by the globalists. You saw them six years ago break down the borders. In fact, roll for TV viewers. You know, some of the B-roll the last six years of just fences being climbed over and rammed down, the same stuff we just saw. And then once that happens, then they build the UN center in your country, and then it's all over. This is footage three weeks ago in Mexico. We told you they were coming. The media said it didn't exist. How crazy is that? Now it's here. And now 50 plus thousand more are massing. And now you know kids are going to get hurt in this. And they're going to blame America. They're going to blame Trump. And there they are waving foreign flags. There they are burning American flags. And the same playbook for Europe is now being played against us right now. 877-789-2539. And tomorrow, I'll be on from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. covering this. You better believe David Knight with the David Knight Show, 8 a.m. tomorrow with this syndicated radio TV show, is going to be knocking out of the park. And why are they trying to censor us? Why are they trying to block us? Because we're loyal Americans. Because we know the program. We know the operation. And it's insulting to us to see Soros at Davos saying, I'm funding Zodiac boats out of North Africa, 100 plus a day. I'm funding the collapse of the world. I'm bringing in the third world. We're going to control these people. They won't be able to get jobs. We'll run them. America or Europe gets out of line, they'll burn down every city. And now he's in a hostile takeover of Facebook that could bring down the whole damn stock market. George Soros is now shorting the U.S. stock market to try to destroy it like Bill Maher said. Let's crash the stock market to kick Trump out. And then he's the bad guy. Trump's the bad guy for being 
a good person that actually is being pragmatic and standing up for everybody. This is so sick. I'm going to go to break, come back with your calls. Funny Python humor if it wasn't so crazy. Now, a lot of times I open the number of the phones for military or police, specifically on a mission, and we even you know, get a lot of calls on it. And we've had a lot of callers call in who have opinions, obviously, which we care about and want to hear from, but I want to hear from military being deployed or about to be deployed to the border, and, and not any secret stuff, but basically what they think of this as citizens watching this, knowing it's UN-funded, knowing the media said, first, we must accept it, no borders, no walls, no USA at all. It's the Democrat slogan, America was never great, it'll never be great. That's the governor of New York. I mean... When I say Democrats aren't Americans, folks, they're globalists. They've signed on with the Chicoms and the EU and Apple and Tim Cook, man. Willen is in the military. We're not going to say from where. He told us where, but I'm not going to even say where. He's being deployed tomorrow to the California border, and he's going to give us his take on this. Willen uh, calling in from a great state. I'll just leave it at that. What is your view on this? And then the propaganda of saying it doesn't exist. Well, Alex, for one thing, nobody's getting the whole story of what's really going on. Our intel is that there's millions coming. That's our intel. And one of the things that I've always feared is our border getting rushed like it is. And they're not just massing from uh, down there in Honduras. And they're coming from Chile. They're coming from Brazil. They're coming from all over in South America. And our intel is that there's people down there on the ground telling them to get here because they're going to get a free ride. And I, I don't know why the president is, is not doing something uh, bigger. He's just he's sending us down there to put a patch on on things. What's getting ready to come to this country is going to be unbelievable. If it, if it, if it gets together, if it gets very, very organized. Right now you're just seeing like, like the beginning of things. But just wait. If this thing gets very organized uh, – we're going to have a lot bigger trouble than what we got going on right now. But well, Willen, let me say something. Your intel that you're being given by your your, your people is 100% on target. The U.N. is on record funding it with taxpayer money. Trump is trying to move to cut the money off. But it, it's in the news today. He has all these traders in the State Department ignoring his orders. Basically, a stay-behind network is what I call it. Uh, the headline is Trump advisors report embedded enemies trying to undermine president. So I'll start using the president's term of embedded deep staters, Democrats, but the, the, the CIA term is stay behind network. So I'm, I'm using the technical term that the enemy's using, but I'll use the president's term from this point forward, embedded enemies. Uh, the, um, I mean, the president, well, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to leave it at that. So, so the point is, is that, is that this is millions. They, they did this six years ago in Europe. It became 15 million at least military age men. And you're right, millions are being masked. This is just the vanguard test for PR because when the real group of, you know, hundreds of thousands of males at a time hit, it's going to be very violent. So these are more the PR groups with a few women and kids in so they can script it. So this is just the test. So this is a probe, completely a probe. Uh, and again, this was an old plan of the weathermen that the Republicans learned about in the 80s to actually, if they could make Latin America go communist, they were going to then build refugee camps after they collapsed the countries under communism, which they've now done, like Venezuela, and then rush the U.S. border and use the humanitarian crisis, claiming the U.S. military was abusing the invaders. A lot of them are military-aged men who are meant to stir up trouble. That's already been confirmed. And then they think that will cause an uprising and a civil rights revolution in America. Well, you now see all that pre-programming ready. So whatever you're being told is dead on. Without getting into any classified briefings, I mean, what else are you guys being told? Well, I like a lot of things. You got good intel, too. Every, just about everything you've been saying is what we've been hearing, except for we – there's more deeper stuff that we can't get – I can't get into on the air because uh, I blow my cover. But one thing I will say to, to the American people, it, it, if these people finally get together where they need to go – and they get lined up, and they get shipped up here, it, it's going to be chaos, and you can't just fire on these people because they're unarmed. And you know how the media is. Even if they start throwing rocks at us and propelling us, they, they'll, they'll show somebody that it isn't, and they'll say, look, they're killing unarmed people. 
What the president needs to do, he needs to hold a national press conference and blow all this out of the water, and it will stop. Because now all the people that are on the fence and even moderate Democrats, if they would see what's going on and president have a lawyer next to him, even with the, the Mueller probe, if he has a daggone the lawyer next to him, prime time explaining everything that's going on, the American people will wake up. If he's trying to uh, band-aid the stock market, it's going to collapse either tomorrow or next week. As soon as these people rest our country, our country's going to be gone because then the stock market's going to be like, oh, God, it's going to tank. And, 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 and by the way, you're, you're, you're getting some good intel there. Well, I don't think you just came up for that yourself because that's something I mean. Soros is shorting the whole stock market, not just Facebook right now. And I'm getting chills. This is literally our country on its deathbed. Trump was put in by patriots to try to stop this. They're still going ahead with the plan to collapse our borders like Europe, to, to tank the stock market so the globalists can buy it up for pennies on the dollar. And I know what they're doing. They've got MS-13. They've got drugs. They're child smuggling. This is criminals being organized as a secret army in Latin America. Hell, it came out in congressional hearings in the 80s. This was always the globalist plan. And now they're actually going to try to play it because they know, like you said, they even had guns uh, when they broke the Mexican border in Guatemala. They were shooting police, and they've arrested hundreds and hundreds of them for committing crimes. They're going to have groups that will kill their own people once they crest. I think in a couple weeks, there'll be 20, 30,000 or more in a couple weeks. There's only 5,000 right now is the, the public number. You may know more that are hiding out waiting for orders. They admit they're coordinated. And so once they're given the order to come in, then they have a few of their own people, shoot a few people, and blame the U.S. military, and then the Democrats will punch the button for nationwide riots, which they admit they're planning. And that's exactly right. So I, I, you know, I don't get to speak with the president because I, I'm low level, but I, I have friends in high places like you do, Alex. And I tell you what, if, if the president, somebody needs to get a hold of the president and and tell him what's really going on. I think the people in his cabinet are like milk toasting what they're telling him. Uh, that's confirmed. Because I don't know what they're what they're doing. Once these people, they, we call it roaches. There's roaches all over the place. Once they set the motel where it needs to be, they're going to flood that thing, and that is our southern border. And once they hit our southern border, we're talking millions and millions and millions of people. And let's be clear. And it's it, the U.N. playbook. We just saw it happen. Trump advises... Trump advisors claim embedded enemies trying to undermine the president. That's the Hill. Infowars.com has it posted. Trump wanted to order Justice Department to prosecute Comey and Clinton. They wouldn't even follow his orders. This is their plan. They're making their move. It is insane. And I wish we had more reporters. I've had reporters down there for a week. We have very limited crew because of the financing, but we're going to try to send more people now. Hell, I might just go to the border right now myself because we've got to get down there. We've got to document this because this is the globalist move. This is it. They want to PR condition us to accept people being let in. And once we do that, it's over. God bless you, Will, and be safe getting down there to California. Okay, folks, I'm out of time. Uh, David Knight's at 8 a.m. tomorrow. He'll be covering this. I'll be back at 11 a.m. Owen Schroyer uh, at 3 p.m.